TC Nation. Thank you for joining. Thank you for clicking on this sermon. And guess what? This week's a special week. My husband wrote a book. I'm so proud of you. Thank you and thank you. you're welcome. And we're so happy that you joined. And I want you to know that the reason we wrote this book, Relationship Goals, is to help you win in relationships. And today we do believe this message is going to help you. All the content in this series, Relationship Goals Reloaded, is going to help you because we believe that you can win in relationships. No matter where you are, there is a brighter future for you. Maybe you just need to learn some things. So go get the book today at I am Mike Todd.com and enjoy this message as we all win in relationship. I believe God is doing something good in this series. I don't know about you, but if this is your first time tuning in, we want to say welcome. I want to let you know that the name of this series is Relationship Goals Reloaded. And I am loaded and ready to help you win in all of your relationships. If you are just now joining us, we are in mid-flight. What does that actually mean? That means we've been going for two weeks already, and I've started a sermon series, and, and, and I'm doing part two of it today. And I, I just want to let you know, if you have not watched last week's message, you need to go back and watch it, because I got so much more revelation that I can't go back and go through every detail of it. But I'm going to try to give you a, a, a quick rewind so that we can get into the revelation that God has for us today. If you're ready, I need to see it in the comments. Say, I'm ready. I'm watching right now. Where are y'all watching from? I, s- somebody say, I'm ready. Come on. Okay, I hear some people saying I'm ready. We have people right now watching from California. We have people right now watching from New Jersey. We have people right now watching from Houston, from London, from, oh my goodness, from Kenya. What time is it in Kenya right now? Wherever you're watching from, God wants you to win in relationships. Say that out of your mouth. Say, God wants me to win in relationships. Somebody needs to say it one more time. Somebody say, God wants me to win in relationships. If you believe that, then you have to put God at the front of all your relationships. He has to be the one in front, beside, behind, and all around all of your relationships. And today, that's why I came up with this message title called Rip the List because most of us have a list that we have made without God. Most of us have a list of how we want our relationships to be, what time we want our relationships to start, how we want to be in um, um, business and in success and all this other stuff. And what I found is that a lot of people are frustrated in their life right now because your list does not look like God's list for you. And whenever you start trying to function out of your list, what ends up happening is you use a lot of effort and energy that produces no results. And, and, and what happens is it's what I call the equation of frustration. And I want to give it to you right now because the equation of frustration is fabricated expectations, things that you made up, things that you wrote on a dream board and never prayed about. Things that you said that, that, that just sounded good but had no value in the, the life of your purpose. Fabricated expectations plus failed realities equal feelings of frustration. And instead of us being frustrated that COVID-19 happened, instead of us being frustrated that that person walked out of our life, what we are saying to God is here is my list. And everything I made up without you, I am now ripping up the list. And somebody needs to put that in the comments right now. Say, rip the list. And I'm telling you, I saw people all last week with tears in their eyes, ripping up the list, ripping up expectations that they made, things that would be great, but aren't God's best for us. And today I'm asking some of you to do the same thing because some of y'all ripped up a few things on your list. But today there will be a full surrender. Because if you want to see what God has for you, you have to let go of what you have for you. I just said a mouthful. If you want what God has for you, for your relationships, for your marriage, for your singleness, for your time, even now that you're single again after a divorce or whatever relational status you're in, you have to let go of what is in your hand. And we started looking at the life of Joseph because Joseph had a dream. And you can follow it all in Genesis chapter 37. But Joseph had a dream, and and, and part of Joseph's dream is that one day he would be in a place of rulership, a palace. He would be in his purpose, 
And, and what, what Joseph probably did like a bunch of us do when God gives us a word or gives us a dream, we, we, we say, all right, so I'm going from here to here. It's going to be smooth selling, but I, I want you to see what Joseph's list look like. See, Joseph's list look like, oh, I got a dream. Now I'm going to get support. I'm going to have opportunity. And then I'm going to get a promotion and it's on to the palace. But just like many of us in our relationships, in our business, in our life, in our money, the dream that we want, the list that we make doesn't look like the life that we live. And that's where frustration comes in. Do you know what actually happened in Joseph's life? He had a dream. It was from God. He had a word from God. But then he was betrayed by his brothers. He was sold into slavery for 25 pieces of, of, of coin. And then he was put into prison and lied on. But then he still got the palace, which encourages somebody right now, no matter where you're at in your relational life right now, no matter where your business is, I'm getting happy already. No matter where you've been and what you've been doing, God can still deliver you to the palace or your purpose, even if you're currently in a pit. And somebody came to hear that today because what's happening with your money is a pit. What's happening with your relationship and your marriage is a pit. What's happening with your kids is a pit. And God says, I'm the God who takes people from pits to palaces. Somebody needs to hear that right now. I have not left you. I have not forsaken you. But you got to figure out why it's important to stop making up plans without me. Rip the list. And when you rip your list, it changes everything. Let me give you the point that summarizes everything we talked about last week. Rip your list because God is more committed to your destiny than he is to your desires. Somebody needs to hear me say that so clearly. I know you got a bunch of desires, but he don't care about your desires more than he cares about your destiny. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, he marked you. He put a destiny in your DNA. And he's saying, do you want what you want or do you want what I want for you that I know will fulfill you? And that's why when we look at our relationships, we got to really put them on the chopping block. Is this something I want or is this something that God wants for me <laughs> that will be able to help me reach my destiny? The business that you're about to start right now, you're about to go live on your, on your business today right after church. Is this something that God wants or was this a counterfeit way of producing for yourself because you don't trust God will take care of you in the midst of a pandemic? Uh-oh. Like, like I, all I'm asking you is will you rip up your list? Put the pit graphic up there because somebody needs to see this right now. Um, where we find Joseph today is we find him in prison. But how did he get there? He started off with the dream, betrayed by his brothers, fell got sold into slavery, started producing success in a season where he was supposed to be enslaved. Which tells me that no matter what season you're in right now, if you serve the season, you can still find success. Somebody needs to hear me say this. If you're single, you can be successful without anybody else. If you're married in that season, if you serve it well, you can be successful. If you're divorced and you're waiting to rebuild and do something, you can be successful in any season. Joseph was in a pit and was still bossing. What I'm telling you is there no excuse for what God can do in your life if you would surrender to his plan. But then he catches a case with a cougar. She lies on him and said he was trying to sleep with him. Y'all read the Bible. It's so good. And now Joseph is thrown in the royal prison. And that's where we're going to pick up this thing today. Genesis chapter 40. It goes through this story where he's sitting in jail. And if it was me sitting in jail for something I didn't do, I would be pissed. Now, just think about it. Go with me. It's a movie. I'm sitting in jail like, I know that heifer did not lie on me. She done lied on me. I ain't even get none. I shoulda. I woulda. I better. Doesn't that what it sounds like when sometimes you're in a place where you never thought you would be? And you start going, I shoulda, I woulda, I coulda. But but. I'm glad Joseph was there and not me because something that Joseph learned being in bad situations over and over again and why he ripped up his list earlier in his life 
is he said, I'm not going to concentrate on why I'm here or what, what got me here, but I'm going to concentrate on what God's trying to do in me while I'm here. Hear me. Not what got me here, but what is God trying to do while I'm here? And I wouldn't have had the guts to do what Joseph did. But he started helping people in prison. He served the season that was unfair. He still came to it with the right attitude. And I don't know about you, but some of us have been missing what God wants to do in this season, where we're at right now, because we got the wrong attitude going into it. I can't stand this job. I can't stand these people. I can't stand this family. And God's saying, you missing it. If you don't go ahead and rip up your list right now, you're going to miss what I want to do. And because Joseph came to the prison with the right, right attitude, there was a night when the king's cupbearer and the king's baker got thrown into jail. I don't know what type of harsh times these were, but if you get thrown in jail for baking and tasting <laughs> the drink, it's, it's, it's ridiculous out here. They get thrown in jail, and they both have a dream. Now, I want you to watch this. You got to go back and read this whole thing because I'm paraphrasing like five chapters of the Bible right now. They both have a dream. And Joseph serves people in the same position he's in. He doesn't serve people that can help him. He serves people on his level. See, part of serving the season that you're in, I feel the Spirit of God coming on me right now. Part of you serving the season that you're in is not serving people who can take you to the next level. It's serving people that God places in front of you. And he begins to serve those people, and, and he interprets their dream. He said, yeah, 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 um, cupbearer, in three days, um, you're going to get restored back to your position, and everything's going to be good, so don't worry. And then the baker was like, can you tell him about my dream? He was like, yeah, bro, this is a little more uh, tragic for you. Um, in three days they're going to throw a party. They're going to call you up and you think you're going to the next level. They're going to kill you. And the Bible says it happens just as Joseph said. Now, I, I, I think about this because at this moment, if I'm Joseph, I'm like, yo, the dude that I helped that's going to get put back in his, his next level and he's bros with the king, maybe he can put in a good word for me. Maybe the relationship I formed right here is the relationship that I need to go to the next level. And so look what happens in Genesis chapter 40, verse 23. I love the Bible. Pharaoh's chief cupbearer, after Joseph said, hey, don't forget about me. Look what it says. His cupbearer, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. And then look what it goes. Genesis 41, verse 1. Two full Years later, what happens when you are faithful, but you still got forgot? Oh, I'm coming to help you because many of us have not ripped up the list and we're bitter now because we were faithful in the season and somebody still forgot about us. We were faithful. I, I, know, I know if you're just joining, it's like, it seems like he's already in. Go back and watch the other one. But there's some of us that have been faithful in the last season. Some of us who prayed. Some of who gave up the bit higher paying job. Some of us who stayed in the place where we were undervalued. And we now are forgotten about. But we were faithful. And that's why I'm encouraging you right now not to focus on being forgot about. The only way that you can focus on not being forgot about is you remember who loves you. I'm, 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 I'm going for your heart at this whole, uh, first moment. The reason why you rip up the list is because you're loved even when you feel left behind. You need to write this down. The only thing that could anchor Joseph in this season is that the Bible says it so many times, and God was with Joseph, and God was with Joseph, and God was with Joseph. And I don't know who you're, who I'm talking to and what your name is, but God was with you. And he was with you when you were hurt. He was with you when you were abandoned. He was with you when you were broken, and he is with you now. Somebody put it in the chat, God is with me. Somebody came here on Mother's Day to hear it. God is with you, and you are loved. You are loved. Even when you feel left behind, every mother out here, I need you to realize that it's not in your performance. 
It's not in your performance that God is grading you. Before you had kids. I don't know, somebody needs this ministry right now. Before you had kids, before you had a husband, before you um, slept with that man, and now you're the baby mama, and all these labels and stuff have been trying to be put on you. I hear God saying, I loved you, and I knew it was going to happen. I loved you, and I saw you after it happened. I loved you, and the love of God is the thing that will hold you steady when others forget about you. I need somebody to hear me right now. You've been waiting for somebody to come back and apologize. You've been waiting for somebody to tell you you're worth it. And God said, when I stretched out my arms on the cross, I was looking at you, baby. I was looking at you, brother, and I thought you were worth it. And that was my love for God so loved the world that he gave. And I just need somebody to hear me say it right now. You need to get the revelation that Joseph had. And the thing that allowed him to rip up his list is he knew he was loved even when he was forgot about. That's the only way you can hold on two years after being forgot about. This wasn't two days or two weeks. He told them three days, bro, you're going to get out. Remember me. Bro was like, I know I'm I'm supposed to remember something, but oh, food. Like, and he just forgot about him. Two years goes by. But the only anchor was the love of God. And let me tell you how strong that is, because some of y'all think that's a cliche statement, especially for church. But look what Romans 8.38 says. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Doesn't that sound applicable right now in coronavirus? God's saying, my love will sustain you and anchor you through all of that. He said, verse 39, no power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. See, the love of God gives you hope through hell. If you're going through hell right now, you got to remember that God is using everything. And if you would surrender, he'll turn that whole situation around. I hear some people who are saying, I don't deserve relationship anymore. I've broken so many things. I'm so messed up. And God said, but my love is so much greater than that. And I need you to hear me say this. Somebody's pulling on me right now. I feel it coming from me right now that the love of God is the thing you've been searching for. It hasn't been in a person. That's why you've had failed relationship after failed relationship, failed business deal after failed business deal, because you're trying to put the weight of something that they cannot feel on them. But God says, come to me, all who are weary, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And today, I just feel this as the first point, that the love of God is coming to overshadow all your deficiencies. Somebody needs to receive that right now. The love of God is coming to overshadow all your deficiencies. And that's why Joseph is able to hold on for two years. Could you hold on for two years? Would you still keep a right attitude for two years? Would you still be singing praise songs after two years? Would you still be talking, trust in the Lord with all your heart? My time would be like, God, where are you at? This is really stupid. A year later, this is dumb and I'm about to get mad. Two years later, I'm done believing God has failed me. And that's where many of you are today. It started out as trusting the Lord with all your heart. And because it took too much time. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I, I, I need to come to you because on our list, uh-oh, on our list, we put times next to stuff. At, at 22, I'll be doing this. And at 27, I'll be married. And at 31, I'll have my second kid. And at 37, we'll be planning our retirement. And God said, uh, trust in the Lord. With all your heart, trust it. I know I'm in your business right now, but your timeline, God stands outside of time. And he's looking at your purpose and he's not looking at the clock. He said, I'm the God for some of you that think it's too late. He says, I'm the God that redeems time. Everything that the canker worm thought he stole from you, I can be able to pull that thing all the way back. And all the years I will restore them. Somebody needs to get excited right now because you've been crying over what you thought you lost. But that wasn't a setback, baby. That was a setup. 
God is about to take everything that looked like a step back and he's going to move you forward. But it takes you trusting in him even when it's off your timetable. Rip up your list. So then what happens is one day in the process of time, two years later, Joseph's just sitting there like, God, I trust you. (laughs) This is trash, but I trust you. Do y'all know that's okay? God is not offended by the statement, this is trash, but I trust you. See, a lot of us, we try to dismiss our emotions about what we're feeling and we just try to stuff them like they're not real. It's, God is not offended by your reality. He's in it. So you can tell God, this is trash, but I trust you. It cannot end with this is trash. It has, it has to end with I trust you. It can't be God, I trust you, but this is trash because that last statement is going to precede what comes after it. But you can say this is trash. This is not fair. I never thought I would be here. I never signed up for this. Nobody ever told me it would be this hard, but I trust you. And when you get to that place, then stuff starts happening. Look at it in Genesis chapter 41, verse 8, because Pharaoh begins to have a dream. Now, I want you to remember in the very beginning of this story, Joseph has a dream. That's what starts this whole thing. He interprets the dream of two dudes in prison. The dude forgets about him, and now Pharaoh has a dream. And Pharaoh has a dream that there are seven fat fat cows and seven skinny cows. And in the dream, the seven skinny cows eat the seven fat cows. And then he wakes up terrified. He goes back to sleep and has a second dream. And he has the dream that seven skinny um, 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 bushels of grain eat seven big bushels of grain. And what it was that Joseph is going to tell him is basically there's a famine coming and you need to prepare for it. Um, But he didn't know that. And so he woke up super disturbed. Look at it. Genesis 41 verse 8. The next morning, Pharaoh was very disturbed by the dream. So he called for, look who he called for, the magicians and the wise men of Egypt. When Pharaoh told them his dream, not one of them could tell him what they meant. Finally, the king's chief cupbearer, the dude who forgot about Joseph, but was, was in the right place at the right time at this moment. He said, Today I've been reminded of my failure, he told Pharaoh. Some time ago, you were angry with me for giving you the wrong juice, and you imprisoned me, and you imprisoned the baker too because the bread was nasty. One night, the chief baker and I each had a dream, and each dream had its own meaning. There was a young Hebrew man with us in the prison who was a slave of the captain of the guard, We told him our dreams, and he told us what each of our dreams meant. And everything happened just as he predicted. I was restored to my position as a cupbearer, and the chief baker was executed and impaled on a pole. There's two things that I need to do right here because I feel like a pastor in this moment. And if you're new to church, I want to let you know this God thing is really real, okay? Um, The first thing is that Joseph had a dream, and it was a prophecy of what was going to happen. It was something that God told the person before it happened with no evidence that it was going to happen. And 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 Joseph believed it because it came from God. But those dudes, it had to be proved to them. What I want to tell some people right now that the words that God has spoken over you, whether you believe them or not, they're coming to pass. Like that when God speaks something, and I know somebody was like, this is weird, this is spooky. Stay with me. I'm about to give you a real life example of God speaking a word over somebody. See, this whole relationship goals thing is not something that's just a cool title for us. Me and my wife, Natalie, we went through hell in our relationship because nobody gave us a playbook. And the only thing after cheating on her, after being a, a rat, raggedy, raggedy, raggedy person after doing all of these other things and we were about to go away from the promise that God called us to. The only thing that held us in the middle of that season was a word from God. And I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but this is the thing you need to start praying for more than a man. This is the thing you need to start praying for more than a business. This is the thing you need to start praying for more than everything that's been on your list. You need to rip up your list and ask for a word 
word from God. You need to rip up your list and get confirmation to what God has called you to do. And I remember it. I had just gotten out of high school. This was 2006. And God gave me and Natalie a word from prophetess Pam Burnett, my godmother. Literally, we walked into church late and we was fooling around and doing all kinds of stupid things the night before. And we walk in the church, look at the scene. And she's like, Michael and Natalie, come to the front. I said, oh, shoot, they done called us. The Lord done showed them something. We about to be put on blast. I was trying to hold Natalie's hand. She was like, get off of me. It was just one of those scenes. And then God spoke a word in a moment that we didn't understand where we were and what God had planned for us. The palace was coming, but we were in the pit. The palace would be writing relationship goals and our marriage actually being good and us helping other marriages and singles all around the world and it going New York Times bestseller. That was the palace. But at that moment, we were in the pit. And when you're in the pit, you got to rip up your list because you don't need what you want to happen. You need what God wants to happen to come in your life. I found the recording from 2006 from the word of God that was spoken over me and Natalie. And I want you to realize right now what you're about to hear was a word from God. I had never preached a message before. I'd been out of high school for at least uh, uh, six months. And then God spoke this word that held us through the whole thing in the pit. I want you to take a listen to this word right now. Natalie and Michael, I want you to come. I've been seeing this for a long time. God says the two of you were meant for each other. He selected you and put you together. And he says that he's speeding up the time of your joining in union. You're going to be married a little earlier, not a lot earlier, than you might think or you might plan. But God says that in the season that you marry, you need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt everything that you want. And you need to start saving and putting things away for it. Because he says the season and the months are going to pass too swiftly. So that means that if you desire to have a certain kind of dress and you know that it's so expensive, you need to start buying that dress now. You're going to go through a period that's going to be like a trial separation. God says that the yearning for each other is going to increase so much that you're going to have a tendency, now please hear me in the light in which I'm saying it, to commit sin. Because that's when the enemy knocks at the door the hardest, when the yearning and the longing. But the yearning and the longing, longing will be sent to draw you closer together but closer together for purpose. So you must fight sin with every fiber of your being. You must not allow anything to take you into it. You're going to have to make adjustments in your relationship. And just know that it will be glorious. So God says he's about to send your names to the nations. The nations are going to hear your names. Already your names have been in the wind. And as you take a wife, Michael, it will be that the favor of the Lord falls upon you. And it falls upon you in a very prosperous and favorable and powerful way. There will be many albums with your name on them. Not just for the instrument, but for writing and arranging. Many albums, I see one right after another. And hear this son of man, who is now a son of God. Your name will be on secular albums as well as Christian. God says that he is taking this season to beat everything out of the two of you that is unlike him. So just expect that if quarrels try to come up, it's because something was embedded within there that has to come out so that it comes out before it can defile you from within. God says he is perfecting those things concerning you and bringing it down to a fine tune. There will be messages that you will preach. Yes, I said preach, son. That will be so funny that people will be coming from miles around to hear them. You're going to mix the comedy and you're going to mix the irony and you're going to mix the stalwartness and the straightforwardness of God with a prophetic overtone that says what the future of mankind is. You are not going to be relegated to, ma to being married to young people's ministry all the days of your life. For your ministry will cross over into every strata, every sphere of society. You may not think woman of God, woman of man. 
that you are going to walk into the secular arena and make impact in the business arena, but God says yes. He is birthing a business in your belly. You have no idea about it, and it'll be pretty things. It'll be full of the artistry that is yours, and he is about to give you an increase in your skills. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, it's going to get better, says the Spirit of the Lord. You are going to be such a powerful woman of God that when you walk into the galleries of New York, they're going to turn around and say, who walked in here? I know that that might be hard for you to imagine because you're so young, but that's who you are in the scheme of things in the gospel. No more thinking any less than God thinks of who you are. It's a brand new day for you. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, my God. If you don't see that word in today, you not looking. And there were things I had to cut the prophecy down from like 15 minutes. There's more stuff in there. But I just wanted you to see that a word from God is worth ripping up your list. Ah! And it may not come to you in somebody saying it like that, but you can get a word from God from God. See, that's why Jesus came, is that there didn't have to be a mediator. There, you could go to God for yourself. That's why your quiet time is so important. That's why you praying is so important, because you can be reading a scripture, and then God begins to download into you. When I got the vision or the list for this building I'm standing in, nobody gave that to me. God said, Michael, in your quiet time, come right here. I'm going to tell you, the Spirit Bank Event Center will be Transformation Church. It'll be paid for. Somebody's going to underwrite the whole thing. We we are standing in the word of God and God is saying, do you want what you want or do you want what I want for you? If you want it, I'll give you a word, but you got to whip the list. And today I'm telling you that in Genesis 41 verse 13, the testimony that I have, like the testimony that this cup bearer had, it says, and everything happened just as he predicted. And what I'm telling you today, I'm a living witness of why you should rip up your list for your relationships, why you should rip up your list for your family, why you should say, God, I want you to give me fresh vision. Because if you get a word from God, you'll get this testimony too. And everything happened just as he had predicted. That's why I'm ripping up my list. That's why I don't care, and that's why you don't care if they tile and dark and play in the NBA. If they're a business major from a community college, but they're who God called you to be with, baby, you don't want what you want. You want what you need. And that's where God says, rip up your list. Ah, I feel this thing already. Hold on. Let me get back to my notes because I don't got that much more time. But y'all ain't doing nothing anyway, so I'm going to keep going. Here we go. It says, rip up your list. I want you to see this. Because Pharaoh is having a conversation with the cupbearer in the palace. I'll say it again. Pharaoh is having a conversation about Joseph with the cupbearer in the palace while Joseph is in the prison. Pharaoh is having a conversation about Joseph with the cupbearer in the palace while Joseph is still in the prison. Somebody's talking about you right now at your next level while you still in the pit. Somebody just caught it by faith. Your name is on somebody's lips while you feel like you're at the worst place of your life and nothing can happen. That's why God says, baby, don't be mad. Serve the season that you're in. Don't be trying to jump steps. Stay right where I've planted you because somebody is talking about you right now in your next level of promotion, while you feel like you're at the lowest and darkest place of your life. Somebody's about to catch this. This is why you rip up your list, because your name is in rooms you've never been in yet. Ah! I got to run around. Your name is in rooms you've never been in. Say it with me. Yet. See, the thing that God is trying to do with you it's how you go from a prison to a palace. It's not because of your good deeds. 
not because of your good works, not because of how many Instagram followers you have, not because of all your connections. It's because of your obedience. Because Joseph served every season he was in with joy and grace and the right attitude. God could trust that when his name came up in a palace, he would have the character to withstand at that level. And the problem is most of us, the places we want to be, our character doesn't match for that place. To be integrous and serve the season, no matter what it's called for, that's why God is using this pit season of betrayal. That's why he's using the pit season that seems like you're in slavery or a prison to think. God says, I'm developing something in you. I'm changing something in you. And and if you ever get the character of the kingdom, you can rule in the kingdom. You missed it. If you get the character for the palace, then you can rule in the palace. Y'all are missing it. Y'all ain't even with me yet. See, see, what you got to understand is your name will precede your presence. No matter where God is take, taking you, they're going to talk about you before they invite you there. And that's why you cannot be frustrated when you don't see anything working right now. That's why the song says, even when you don't see it, He's working. Even when you don't feel it, he's working. He is out there having people have conversations. Somebody's catching this by faith right now. I feel it. Your name is in rooms you've never been in. What? Yet. And and, and I want to thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want you to understand that this doesn't just apply to the natural. This applies to the spiritual. Remember what I just said? I said your name precedes your presence. This is why praise and worship is so important and why we spend this long of a time calling him Savior and King and Lord and Master. Why do we say that? It's because when we call up at his name, his name precedes his presence. When we call out to him, he says, I think I hear my children actually calling out to me. Is that my name? Are they saying me? Are they saying Jehovah Jireh? Are they saying the Lord who will provide? And he comes and inhabits the praises of his people because we're shouting out his name before we ever see his presence. What I'm encouraging you to do right now. God is giving revelation right here. If you're in your house, if you're at your job and you need the presence of God, why don't you start calling out his name? Because he comes into rooms where he's invited. You need to walk into your business place and say, Jesus is Lord. You need to walk into that bedroom where there's been so much cold and bitter disunity and you need to say, Father, thank you for being peace. The one that is with us. I'm telling you, call his name and watch his presence come. I feel this thing because God is saying to many of you right now, the reason you have to rip up your list is because you're needed where you're not known. Joseph was needed in a place where he was not yet known. And that's why God says, don't give up now. Don't be stuck to your list at this moment. Find my will because you're needed. in pl- I never knew I was needed to be a speaker of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thought I was going to be a music producer. That's why you heard on the prophecy. She said, and you're going to speak. You're going to preach. And literally at that moment, I started laughing. And you can hear on the recording, she started laughing. She said, yes, I said preacher. Yes, I said minister. Because at that point, I had never spoken a message in my life. I had never. Mom, am I telling the truth? I had never. Everything was in music. And God said, yeah, 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 that's what you think it is. But rip that list up. <laughs> like, 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 rip that up. Because you're needed where you're not yet known. <sighs> I feel that thing so strong right now. There's somebody about to give up and God said, don't give up. Because you're needed where you're not ne- yet known. I think about the, the, the guy who's producing our service right now, Justice. Justice went through a season of trying to be used in so many different areas. And, 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 and he didn't know that here in Tulsa that we were sitting here literally praying that God would bring somebody who could be able to understand my vision and get it quickly and be able to, to, to execute it and carry it out. And I watched Justice this past week preach to um, all of our creative team. And I watched the power of God be used in his personality 
in his skin, with his dry humor. If you ever meet Justice, he's locked in all the time. Like when, but I, I watched what he was doing, and God said, see, Justice, he didn't give up. He stayed faithful in obscurity. He did what I said, whether it looked like betrayal, whether it looked like slavery, whether it looked like a prison. And I took him from a prison to a palace, and now he's leading all of this stuff because... He stayed faithful in the season where it looked like he wasn't needed. And somebody needs to hear me say this. You're needed. Not where you know you're needed. Not in the position that makes sense to you. But you're needed right now where you're not known. I, feel that I could rock that all day. I'm telling you, you're needed where you're not known. That's why you got to go to Hollywood, because you're needed there. That's why you got to go to government, because you're needed there. That's why you got to go to education, because you're needed there. And if you give up now, you won't be able to see all that God has for you. That's why it looks like a pit. But God says, baby, rip up your list. My plans for you are higher than your plans for you. My ways are not like your ways. I got you. You're going to have to do something that may hurt a little bit. You're going to have to take everything you thought it was and rip it up. Well, I'm too old to start over. Ask Abram and Sarah. When they thought that God had a plan for them and they got frustrated about 25 years into the plan and said, you know what? He said we was going to have a baby, but that ain't going to happen. Let's help God do his plan. And they had an illegitimate child out of wedlock. And God said, even though you messed up, what you, what you, you think you messed up my plan, I'm still going to do what I said. Remember what the scripture says, that many are the plans in a man's heart, but God's purpose will prevail. Now you're just going to need extra grace because I'm going to take care of your mistakes. Stake, and I'm going to turn it into your message. But I'm still going to give you that child at 100 years old. So guess what? You should have just ripped up your list. Come on. <laughs> Charles, I'm preaching. Come on, baby. And this is going to save you so much hurt. This is going to save you so much disappointment. Because you take away the erroneous, the fabricated expectations. And you actually live in reality with the Holy Spirit, and then you're not frustrated. And that's what, that's what Joseph does. Look at it, Genesis 41, 14. I love these four words. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph. Hold on. You mean that he didn't have to, like, network his way into the next level he didn't have to try to find somebody who knew somebody that knows somebody. He didn't have to do that. He just, he was sent for? <laughs> he said, Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once. And he was quick, quickly brought up from the prison. I love it. After he shaved and changed his clothes, he went in and stood before Pharaoh. This is why you need to rip up your list. Write this down. Rip up your list because delayed doesn't mean denied. Literally, it took two years, but would you, would you give up two years for actually seeing the promise? And Joseph said, I'm going to patiently wait. I'm going to stay right here. And I was delayed, but I was not denied. And that's why you got to get this attitude that is found in Philippians 1 and 6 that says, and I am certain, I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally Finish on the day when Jesus Christ returns. Somebody, you need to understand that God doesn't leave anything unfinished. But can I be real, real with you? It may not be finished with you if you disobey. Okay. He doesn't, why, you got to stay with me. I'm trying to teach you right now. I feel like Professor Mike right now, okay. It, he doesn't leave anything unfinished. But if you're disobedient, it won't be finished with you. Ask the children of Israel, who he tried to get to the promised land in 11 days. He had to let 2 million people die so he could see what he started finished with their children. And the saddest thing for all of us right now would be, for God to give us a promise that we fight against to the point where he has to choose our children. 
I'm going to let that sit there. He promised that he'd do it for you. But you keep your list preeminent over God's purpose. And so he's saying to you right now, you can have your list. And then I'm going to ask your children to do what I ask you to do. You can keep that. And I'm too old and I got this and this happened to me and this is my excuse. Or you can say, I'm ripping my list. <laughs> I'll start from here. I'm 56 years old. It don't matter. I'm going to go with God because he can redeem the time. He could have took that 11-day journey and put them in the promised land, but it, instead it was a 40-year death. And then their children, the Bible, you can read it. He said, anybody under the age of 20 will be able to see it. But all those people who disobeyed me and created other idols and created other gods and made sports and television and money and boats and houses, they made those the gods. He said, you're going to die with all of that. And then I'll have to ask your children to do what I was supposed to do. All the devastation we're seeing in the world right now is because fathers didn't do what they were supposed to do 40 years ago. All the stuff that we're seeing right now in families is because the people before us, they passed up the opportunity to do it God's way and they thought everything that they had was more than what God had for them but baby I'm telling you there's a generation of about 45,000 people watching right now that is saying I'm not going to do this you're going to have the, the gunction like they did in the Old Testament if you don't go we're not going so we're ripping up our list and that's what you have to know when you rip up your list everything starts to change Look at it. Ah, oh, I love this story. How much time do I got? It don't matter. Okay, here we go. Genesis chapter 41, verse 15. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream last night. No one here that I pay that act like they have it together knows what it means. But I've heard that when you hear about a dream, you can interpret it. Now watch Joseph's perspective of his gift and his talent. Watch it. He said, um, sir, it's really beyond my power to do this. Everything you heard about me, that, that's way beyond my power. But God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. Ah! The reason why you have to rip up your list because it's not in your power. God wants to use you beyond you. He was aware that he didn't have enough to do what he had done before and what was talked about him. And he knew where his help came from. Power belongs to God. I think it was prophet Hezekiah Walker who said that power belongs to God. He said that I'm about to stand here, but you're going to actually see God move. That's what you see every Sunday. I love Pastor Mike preaching. He's so relevant. He said, I'll show you my notes before this service. This is not what was on that. But when I stand here, I know how I'm standing, not by might and not by power, but it is by the Spirit of God. When you walk into that boardroom, the reason you rip up your list is because the deals you're going to make and the insight that you're going to have and the ways that you maneuver things, it's not going to be you. They're going to see you, but they're going to experience God's power. Yeah. Ah! That's why you got to rip up. The, somebody needs to put it in the chat. Rip up your list because God wants to use you beyond you. When I look at God taking somebody who barely liked to read and allowing me to write a New York Times bestseller, I step back and say, God, you did that. That wasn't me. You used me beyond me. And that's why you got to rip up your list. Because the greatest thing that you've ever thought about yourself is still lower than the floor of what God thinks about you. Somebody needs to hear that. Ooh, I'm up here in a velvet suit sweating my brains out. But the reason I am is because somebody needs to hear this right now. That the greatest thing you think about yourself is still below the lowest thing that God thinks about you. And that's why you got to rip it up. That's why you think you made money now? That's what, that's what you want? Is that what you want? Or do you want to be whole? Do, do, do you want to actually have health? Somebody once told me, he said, um, people spend the first half of their life acquiring wealth to be able to then pay for the, the care they need to stay alive, to enjoy it. Think, think about that. And God says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. That's why you got to rip up your lips because God wants to use you beyond you. Joseph starts telling him, this is what your dream means. It means there's a fam famine coming. You need to be able to set aside seven years where there'll be plenty. 
You need to make sure that we store that up. And then we need to go ahead when it's in a drought season. Then we need to ration it out. And we're going to make it through this. And look what happens in Genesis chapter 41, verse 37. I feel the spirit of God. It says, Joseph's suggestions were well received by Pharaoh and his officials. So Pharaoh asked his officials, gentlemen, gentlemen, come here, come here. Um, can we find another, anyone else like this man who is so obviously filled with the spirit of God? A moment ago, he called for magicians and wise men. But when somebody filled with the Spirit of God walked into the room, he said it was obvious. Ah! The reason why it's not working in the world yet is because the sons and daughters of God need to stop trying to, 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 to skip the process and walk where God has called us to walk and rip up the list that we've made for ourselves. Because when we walk into the places that God has called for us, we rip up the list because it's going to be obvious. Let me give it to you in a point. Rip up your list because obedience makes you obvious. When you're obedient to God, it's going to be obvious. Oh, yeah, he the one. <laughs> he, she the one. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, where, that's, that's the one that we're going to do that to. He had no qualifications. He didn't even come from the country. And they said, is there anybody who can do this? Oh, yeah, the one that's right here in front of us. It's obvious he's filled with the Spirit of God. My question to you is, when you walk into places where people don't know your Jesus, is it obvious that you're filled with the Spirit of God? Uh-oh, uh-oh, some of y'all look so much like the people you hate. You actually are talking about yourself when you're talking about others because you're the same type of hypocrite. And God says, could you get into the spirit enough to not look like that but look like me? So when you walk into the room, you don't got to say, and thus says the Lord, when you walk in and you start doing your work in excellence, when you walk in and the way you present yourself and the way you answer and the way you listen before you speak and when you're not trying to prove nothing to nobody. Joseph didn't have to prove nothing because he was sent for. They already had heard about him. God went before him. When you start living like that, it'll be obvious you're filled with the Spirit of God. Ah. Now Joe's in charge of everything. Had a dream. Went to the pit. But now he's at the palace in charge of everything. And there was something, because y'all thought that I forgot about relationship goals in the middle of this. I I'm going to talk about singleness and, and, and uh, marriage, and I'm going to talk about all that. But some of y'all need to get this part of it because it's, it's, it's killing you right now. Because we could talk about all this, and you're just going to be like, yeah, that goes with my list, and that goes with my list, and that doesn't, and that doesn't. And you're going to be voting on what God is saying in these next few weeks. And God says, what do you need to do? Rip up your list. And, but look at this, Genesis chapter 41, verse 45, after he gives them all control, uh, it says, then Pharaoh gave Joseph a new Egyptian name, and he just threw in a wife. Hold on. He was obedient. It made him obvious. He got promoted. He was following in the purpose, and the wife just came? Hold on, no, no, I thought I was supposed to slow down and, and find somebody. And be scoping and just presenting myself. God says, I'll bring the right relationships in the right place. And a lot of people, your husband or your wife is waiting for you in a place where you're not at yet. God can't give them to you in the place you're in now. Because if you get them there, what if, what if, what if Joseph would have got his wife in prison? They would have been bound together which looks like a bunch of our relationships. Like we found the person in the wrong place, and so now we're chained in the wrong place. He needed to find his woman in the palace where there was freedom. He had authority, and he got it. Let me give it to you in a point. You need to go ahead and rip up your list because the right person is always in the right place. <laughs> I'm in some of y'all business right now. 
And that's what God wants for every one of your relationships, not just marriage relationships, your business partnerships. God knows that you're in the wrong place right now. So he can't bring the people with the financing. He can't bring the people that are supposed to be your partner. They can't find you in that place. Y'all be chained in prison. But God says, I want you to come to a place of authority. So he's saying, could you rip up your list? I know you thought Joseph was going to be or John was going to be or Janika is going to be. But no, 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 no. Rip up your list and let me redefine it. See, because what you don't understand is Joseph goes through this season. I'm closing because I don't think y'all can handle no more. Look at people sitting back in their chair like, ah. You might have to watch this three and four times. But I'm giving you keys to life. This is relationship goes reloaded. Because every relationship that you want to have, the better we starts with the better me. And if you don't get these things or you don't rip up your list, you will never, ever become the person that you need to be to do the purpose that God's called you to do. Joseph goes through this season of now being in charge, the literally the second highest commander in the entire area of Egypt. The famine comes and he is in charge of the distribution to everybody. Now, if you think about it, the betrayal that happened to Joseph happened in the worst way. It happened from his family. And I bet there was nights that Joseph sat back and was like, man, I, out of everything that happened to me, the thing that hurts the most is that none of this would be happening if my brothers wouldn't have sold me out. They wouldn't have betrayed me. And that's how some of you feel right now. Some of your greatest relational problems came from somebody that was very close to you. And now Joseph is in this position of power. And the lines are out the, out the palace doors of people who need food. And he probably double takes. He says, no, hold on, give me a second. That can't be them. There's no way. And he goes back and looks again, and it's the very brothers who sold them out who are about to die if they don't get food. This is going to take a lot of guts and a lot of trust and a lot of forgiveness, but the reason you need to rip up your list is because other people's survival is dependent on you surrendering to the season. Joseph wouldn't have surrendered and served God at every season. He wouldn't have been in the position to save his own family. And some of y'all are like, I don't care. I would have let them die. They would have just been out there. I would have just made a mockery of them. That, that lets us know that the pit didn't work. See, the pit is supposed to remind you of God's grace over your own life. So if you're still trying to hold broken people to how they hurt, hurt you hurt people hurt people but what the pit is supposed to show you is that all of us are in need of God's grace and this is proof that Joseph really had made it to the palace that when the people who betrayed him needed him he was able to give them something so they could sustain I bet there was still family drama. I bet he probably didn't show up to every Christmas. I'm not telling us to be stupid. But the only thing that proves that you really are healed is when God can use you to touch those very same people that you messed over and messed up with. I I'm right now, people that I hurt and offended in high school, they're watching this right now. Like people that... I cheated on Natalie with, cheated on Natalie with and all this other stuff. They've been blessed by the ministry. Why? Because I'm healed. I used the pit, the brokenness, the nights addicted to pornography, the jacked up thing. I used it. And when God got my character right, he took me to a place of a palace or a place of my purpose. And now I can pray for those people. I can minister to those people. I can see those people and they can be blessed or sustained and help their marriage and their house and their family right now. Because I'm not holding nobody. And I don't know who you are. But I thought the best way that we end this message that this would be a time where we would surrender. 
Like your list, all of it, all the people, all the ideas, all the timelines, we're ripping them up. And today I want to pray that no matter where you are right now, if you're just getting the dream or if you're in a season of being betrayed or it feels like you're in prison or you're in slavery or you may be in the palace, I'm asking that the God of the universe, as we call on his name, his presence would come into your house, into your business, on your jog right now, whether you're watching this live or on rebroadcast, the presence of God is right there where you are right now. Somebody needs to just lift your hands right now. I'm about to pray for you that the Holy Spirit is coming in. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, whole family, hands lifted up. I believe that right now you're doing heart surgery on all of us, Father, that today we would rip up our list, Father God, and we would rewrite it with you. Father, give us a word. We don't just want a relationship. We want a word. We don't just want finances. We need a word. We don't just want a promotion. We need a word from you. And God, if we get a word from you, God, we will stay faithful. God, I thank you that right now there are people that were thinking about giving up today. I'm asking you that they will make a fresh commitment to serve this season that they're in. It is trash, but I trust you. God, I thank you right now that every marriage that has been on the brink and everybody in singleness who has thought about leaving um, um, the faith. I think about everybody who's divorced or living life without their loved one right now. God, I thank you that you're wrapping your arms around everybody listening right now. And you're pulling them and aligning them back into your will. God, I thank you that today we give up our list and we ask for your will for our life. Speak to our hearts, God. We trust you, we believe you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. I need everybody to look at me. Do something. Get a piece of paper wherever you are right now. Come on, get something. And this is about to be a prophetic sign for everybody right now. Come on, get you a piece of paper right now. G come on, get, get um, that project your little daughter did that you didn't like anyway. Come on, get that. We're, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to rip it up. They made it for Mother's Day. Don't do that. Don't do that. But, but get you a piece of paper right now, okay? And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe that right now that this is going to be a prophetic sign of us letting go of what has held us to this unexpected thing that God's going to do at some certain time. We're giving that up and we're about to rewrite it with, with God. Okay, so I need you. One, God is about to do something. I feel the presence of God right now. Come on. I need you to right now just give everything, every person, every hurt, every pain too. God is about to rewrite your story right now. I feel the presence of God. On the count of three, I want us to rip this up and then I want us to give God praise. I, I don't want us to just rip it up and mourn over it. I want us to rip it up and then begin to thank God that he's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, and he's going to see us through the middle. Come on, one, two, three, rip it up, and now give God praise. God, you're worthy. We love you, God. Hallelujah. There's nobody like you. You have a plan for my life. We trust you, God. We trust you, God. And in that same attitude, I feel the presence of God right there, y'all. Somebody's getting a reset right now. God's going to begin to, as you make time, hear me, as you make time this week to spend time in his word, we have a relationship goal, you version Bible plan. Do it for the next five days. Get in the word of God. Get your journal there. Begin to pray. Begin to see and listen to what God is saying, and he's going to rewrite your list. And then we'll be ready for relationship. Then we'll know how to, I'll give you some keys and some tools and teach you about singleness and dating and all that. But first, we got to rip up our list. If you're here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today's your day to rip up your list. Oh, I was, I was going to do it my own way. I had his plan and da 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 God said, I'm, in, I'm interrupting that. And I want you not to just have a good life. I want you to live a God life. If that's you right now and you're saying, Pastor, I want you to include me in that prayer. And you're saying, well, maybe I don't qualify. Hey, the dude that you're, you're looking at right now, even when I got that prophecy, I was still addicted to pornography. I was a liar. I was a manipulator. I had bad things in my heart. I was doing things that went against God. And God chose me even with my flaws. What I'm telling you is with every broken piece of you, he still picks you. He says, them, right there. They're on my list. 
and the list that God made, he never rips it up. And he wants to put you on another list today. It's called the list that sits in heaven, the Lamb's book of life. And when you get on this list, your eternity is secure. No matter what comes, no matter what goes. He said, you're going to be with me forever. And somebody needs to know tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day of salvation. I don't care what you did before this. I don't care what you were planning and doing after this. God said, I interrupted your schedule to be able to give you an opportunity to choose the greatest decision that you've ever made. And that's Jesus. If that's you on the count of three, I want you to just slip your hand in the air. I don't care who you're watching with. I don't care if you're in the bed with somebody that you're not married to. I don't care what you smoke or drink. God's saying this is the moment. One, God is so proud of you. Two, and so are we. Three, if you want to give your life to Christ, come on, put your hands up right there. Come on. Yep, now you can put your hands down. You don't got to confess all the things you've ever done at this moment. God says all you got to do according to Romans 10, 9 is believe that Jesus came and he died and he rose again just for you and you're saved. What does that mean though? There's going to have to be some actions. You're going to have to repent. You're going to have to turn from the way that you've been going and we want to help you with that. But first, let's say this prayer all together all over the world. I mean, mom, that's crazy. We're saying this prayer all over the world. It's all over the world. And there are people right now that are getting saved with hundreds, if not thousands of other people at this moment. And Transformation Church, we're a family. Nobody prays alone. So I want everybody to pray this prayer. Say, God, thank you for sending Jesus to rip up my list. Change me in my entire life. <laughs> I believe you lived and you died just for me. Flaws and all, today I give you my life. Renew me, transform me. I'm yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, come on. Can we clap it up in every house, at every um, track? I want you to begin to give God praise. Heaven is rejoicing. Thank you so much for watching this message. And if this has impacted you in any way, I'm asking you to do a couple of things. Number one, join Transformation Nation. Join us right here every Sunday. Gather your friends and your family and be a part of not just this moment, but this movement. The second thing I would ask you to do is share. Share this with your friends, your coworkers, people that are around you, because transformation is just one click away. The last thing I would ask you to do is partner with us financially. If this ministry is impacting your life, transforming you, I would ask you to consider, pray about what you could give to help us take this message to the whole world. I want you to know that we love you and your best days are right in front of you. This week, I want you to live a transformed life. See you next week.